like I I don't know what's gonna happen in this episode because things just keep on popping up. Like in the last episode, last episode we had two main fights. We had Jogo versus Sukuna and we had Toji versus Megumi. Now Toji versus Megumi was cool because it just showed us a little bit more about what Toji's like capable of. Sukuna's versus Jogo, on the other hand, it sort of made us realize why they're so um scared of Sukuna. Like Jogo's strong. I think I think Jogo's strong. He didn't even touch Sukuna. That's how crazy it is. And honestly, the the idea that maybe eventually Jo uh, not Jogo, uh Sukuna will verse Gojo is crazy. And can I say again, where the where the heck is Yuta? When is that gonna like come around because at the end of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero you had Gojo talk to Yuta cool I don't know when the time frame that was but it happened and also when Gojo was getting sealed he was telling Gato like hey there's this other person who you know took out Gato before watch out so like it, they're they're implying that he's he's around somewhere he's a he's a Tokyo sorcerer so it's just like, okay, wh where the freak is he? Like, this is a, this is a big deal. I don't know. I maybe it's just me just loving Yuta. Oh yeah, Sukuna can shoot freaking fire arrows. That's cool. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started on a twit. Make sure with original content as always. All right, let's get going in three, two, one, and go. Yuji, hmm? you're a strong kid, so try to help. Oh yeah, others. the grandpa. Gosh, I totally forgot about him. He did help them. Die, Do dog in ten shadows technique. Dog in Zaga. Only two demon dogs are granted to the user at first. The user must continue subjugating each one to increase the Shikigami available to them. Like Pokemon, like capturing Until them. Until they're finally able to command all ten Shikigami. You done yet? Gosh, you're really guy. strong. You're all beat up, yet you give me no openings to get this close. This is a cool how Although the red stands blood, out so much. I won't so even much. have to do anything else to you. And the thing is, what's this other thing that beat him up? Subjugation can be done with multiple people. While the Shikigami can't be used without first subjugating it, the user can summon them as many times as necessary for the purpose of subjugating them. I okay. You're gonna try to pull out a Shikigami that you can't control? Do you know why the Gojo clan and the Zenin clan are on bad terms? Because they're jealous? Zenin is jealous? But the heads of the clans at the time got serious during a spectated match, and they killed each other. Mm. The Gojo family had someone like me. The Zenin clan had someone with the same technique as you, Megumi. Oh, so the top of their game. You understand what I'm getting at, right? Let's not fight each other then? I imagine the head of the clan used this in much the same way back then. I summon. Hmm? Do you recognize Sukuna? it? See you later, Orame. Sir. I shall be waiting for you. Is this is this why you think Megumi is very interesting? Because it is ten shadow. The toads in the He tricked me. Maharaga. Maharaga? It's the dude from freaking Teen Wolf. I'll be dying first. Let me see your best shot. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, damn it! That thing almost reminds me of, uh... The technique of the curse user, Haruta Shigamo, erases life's little daily miracles from his memory and stores them up. Okay. And when he is faced with a threat to his life, one miracle is released. Okay. The thing almost looks like Mother Nature. So saving this piece of trash really was the right move. Once this loser dies, the ritual will be complete, and then Megami Fushiguro will die as well. Are you gonna For beat Megami this up? For Fushiguro to survive, I'll have to defeat this Shikigami as an outsider. Time to have a little taste. I kind of want to see how strong this thing is because if he if he's able to hit Sukuna, pretty powerful. That doesn't count as a hit. Dismantle. Goodness. <laughs> Did you break a bucket? 
I don't think that does anything. Come at me. There's just strong people upon strong people upon strong people. I can't tell what, whether or not Sukuna is trying. The one finger he doesn't care about. Fantastic. Come on, you gotta at least scratch Sukuna. I mean, he, he's healing pretty quick. I, You guys are lucky. I feel like half these people have died already. This guy needs to die. Not yet, but eventually he does. They're dying. Sucks to be them. That felt odd. Why? Why do you feel odd? I, I don't know how I feel about that. Again, again. What are these turning things? I can't remember. Am I supposed to be rooting for Sugana? That guy's gone. Were you surprised right there? He got massive. You can see it, Maharaga! You can see my curse technique! Oh. The amount of destruction. That was a nice looking scene. Where did the plane come from? Must have been Spirit Airlines. Oh. Oh my gosh. You know, I... I'm wondering, why is Suka not, not using his domain? Maybe he just... I knew it! You're similar to Yamata no Orochi. Who? Which suggests that the Shikigami's ability is to adapt to anything and everything. It's the ultimate late throw in rock, paper, scissors. It's pretty nice. Can you get rid of it? Domain expansion. Okay, well, this is why I said it. Malevolent Shrine. Unlike other domains, it does not cut out a separate space with a barrier. To top it off, by adding a pact to allow its victims a path of escape, it vastly increases the range of its guaranteed hit effect to a maximum of a 200 meter radius. He has currently restrained the effect to a 140 meter radius limited to the surface. You, you're telling me these things and I would just love to figure out what the heck it, that means. Same. Yeah, but I don't think we need to worry about that anymore. Yeah, because you guys will be dead. Pretty sure he should be- Cleave attacks things with cursed energy in the range of his guaranteed hit effect. Dismantle attacks things without cursed energy. Both attack all targets relentlessly until Malevolent Shrine is gone. Cleave would have fulfilled those conditions. But that wouldn't necessarily hold true if it had adapted to slices in general, rather than to dismantle. Okay, let's say if I understand that. Could you explain it more to people who don't understand it? Oh, there's the arrow thing again. Open. Obviously, it's not his slicing and dismantling. How do how does the building still have power? And he lost his body. Now it's Itadori. He doesn't have the markings. I think. What the hell are you looking at? Be gone. Really? My luck never runs out. No. I'll see another day. I survived. <laughs> Shigamo's stock of miracles had run out. <gasps> Have you guys not... I just saw it Did you guys not just of... notice any of that? No. Was it Sukuna? Yes. You little brat, be sure to savor this feeling forever. See all the destruction you technically caused? Okay, so I was right. That was. There's nothing. He's gonna go crazy. 
Can he remember all of it? It died. Only me. Oh no. Oh, people got obliterated. <laughs> How, how are people going to explain this? Like a big boulder. Goodness gracious. There's a lot of... I'm left. None of me. You're alive. That's good. Though, third degree burns. Pretty sure you look like Harvey Dent. You are Harvey Dent. Okay, well, on the bright side, uh, maybe Maki survived that. Gosh dang it. These episodes that are with fights, it's so hard to react to it because I feel as though I don't talk like at all when it comes to that stuff because I'm so focused on what, what what's happening. There's a lot of stuff that's moving super quick. And then while all that's happening, they're talking as well. And it's like, oh my God, what the fuck is happening? So Fushiguro, we learned from this episode that his technique, like... Let me try to explain it. We've known that he's been sort of special. We've known from the past that the Zidans, they're, they're, they're thing. And how Fushiguro is like the epitome of their thing, which is, which is cool, right? We, we, we've known that for a while. We've also known that Sukuna has kind of been curious about him. Now, this episode, we've finally, we've given, been given this information that his technique could be on par with Gojo. Now, this is not information that we've had before, and this is not information, or this is not the thought that I've had in my mind previously. Like, I knew, like, I knew he had the power that all the Zenons want. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't expect it to be on the level of Gojo. And it's crazy because looking back, like, the signs were there with Toji looking at Megami first, with Sukuna being interested in Megami, with Gojo being the mentor, with the Zinnins willing to pay for him. And then we get this. So to sort of summarize slash just give you guys my interpretation of what's going on, that way you guys could correct me if if I get it completely wrong. Um, when it comes to his Shigami, he has to have time to control them, right? He can't just summon the certain Shimigami and have them follow his every will. Like he has to, what, what, what was, what do you call it? Like subjugate them? And then he mentioned 10 Shigami. So from what I can tell, there's his demon dogs. There's the, the frog. There's the eagle looking thing. There's the elephant. There's the bunnies. That's five. Uh, there's, there was the snake. I can't think of anything else that we've seen right now. But there technically is four other ones. Now, in this episode, we get number 10. So he skipped the other three, from what I know. And he goes to the 10th one, which is the strongest one. And, oh, goodness gracious. Now, that that thing is a beast. Like, look at this thing. This looks like Mother Nature. Like a different, like, form of it. And from what I can tell, it is one of those... It's a Shigami that can adapt to whoever it's fighting. That's, that's why, or that's one of the things that Sukuna was talking about. And man, this thing is strong. The problem with it is, since Fushiguro didn't subjugate it, it was going to cost him his life. I also love how, because the Shigami is so strong, it just caught Sukuna's attention. Uh, that's how powerful it is. And thus we get to this portion. Uh, so, I think this is what Sukuna wanted. Um, I think he knew... He knew that there was going to be a time limit. I think he knew that before Jogo even said anything about it. And I think he, he's doing it to annoy Itadori. Because he, he's done this before. Like when he was trying to save Junpei. And Itadori was like, hey, Sukuna, I need your help to, to save Junpei. And Sukuna was like, the freak you talking about? Like, I'm not going to do this. I want to watch you watch him die. So Sukuna is like playing around with him. And he did this on purpose so that... Itadori can look at all this destruction and see that all this is by his, not like technically by his doing, but like from his hands. Like because he, because he agreed to Gojo's deal, because he wanted to, you know, save the lives of people, he has caused all of this. Like, I don't know what's going to happen to Itadori. He's this like happy-go-lucky type guy. I don't know if it's going to go away. 
Like he has all these memories of the things that Sukuna did. So I don't know if he's going to turn into like a Deku, like a season seven Deku of where he just starts prioritizing saving people over being happy in his body. So I, I don't know. It's one of these things where like, I definitely think Sukuna was trying to do this. He, he was doing this on purpose to get back at Itadori. But anyways, that was my reaction to Jujutsu Kaisen season two, episode 17. If you like my reaction, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want to know anything more, put it in the section down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.